the crew worldwide From Kylie to Twitter Real hardcore fans Boxing ass niggas Consistency cops Police the views We'll pull up receipts for any debates you choose Shout outs to Clan Arky for the dope production Ring gang stay with the best discussions yes. Ring gang it's the return of the Triple God, Gennady Golovkin, a.k.a. Triple G. You know, I want to fight, guys. His box, you know. <laughs> you, know he, you know, he's back in action at MSG, the same place as, you know, as uh, Joshua and Luis Jr. Um, facing Steve Rolls. Um, now, of course, uh, this fight, uh, in, you know, has gotten a lot of negative reactions, per se. Um, you know, uh, you know, people aren't feeling the fight, for lack of better words. Uh, I don't have, I mean, I myself don't really have an opinion on it other than, fuck it. You know, the guy, the triple god said, you know, he has some hard fights. And, you know, he got a new trainer in Jonathan Banks. So, you know, fuck it, you know, let him do what he do, you know, you know, see what's yeah. good, you know. Yeah, it's not the best fight, you know, but Triple G's at a level where, you know, if he wants to take a fight like this before getting a bigger fight, hey, you know, let, let he do what he do. I mean, where was all this shit when, 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 when niggas was ducking him for five years, but when Felix Sturm ain't want that work, when Canelo was running, when when Sergio Martinez ain't want it, when when Cotto ain't want it, so he get in the bag now. Yeah, niggas sound like they angry. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, I know, cause you know people want the you know people want Triple D to fail. It's just like I don't know why. I don't understand it. You know. I mean, dude is, you know, dude is everything you want to see in a boxer. And personally, you cannot be a fan of boxing if you're not a fan of Triple G. That's real talk. Uh, you know, but, you know, Triple G invokes very strong reactions in people who are not really educated enough to understand boxing um, or they have gender. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean. It's like, you know, a lot of niggas don't appreciate what they see with them, but, um, you know, it is what it is, like, you know. Yeah, you don't have to like every boxer, you know, but, you know, I understand that, you know, dude is still, you know, Triple G is still one of the most dangerous fighters in the world. Oh, well, shit, objectively, that's all, that's all we saying, you know, just keep it real, you know. <laughs> like I said, and, um, yeah, I mean, he's facing Steve Rolls, and like I said, I mean, pretty much the, the fight, this fight is only going to really tell us to see what, was gained or lost since the Canelo fight. Obviously, as I mentioned before, you know, gain was the, you know, gain Jonathan Banks. And then loss is pretty much how much did the Canelo fights, second Canelo fight, take out Triple J. I mean, we've seen Canelo after those fights, he didn't look overly uh, great in either fight after Triple J. You know, especially in his last fight with Jenny Jacobs, he looked bad. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like it, one through ten, I give Canelo performance like a six and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was, it, it was it, it, so it's pretty much it's just gonna be like the Triple G's. I mean, obviously Triple G's thirty six or so, so it could be like the Triple G's slow down thirty six, thirty seven. You know, is Triple G slowing down? Is he no longer effective? You know, is you know all these changes? And then from the videos that I've seen of him, I mean, he looked, he looked in shape. Like you know, he he, he, he looked. Like, he looked like he used to look in his, you know, in his prime middleweight days. Um, Martin Murray, Curtis Stevens, them, you know. Yeah, exactly. Eagle, you know those fights. Yeah, he, I mean, he's he he looks strong as hell. Like he looks like he's about putting some work. So I mean, I saw him in a little pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and that so that's and I know it's twelve rounds at one six at the hundred and sixty four pound limit. It's a catch weight. So yeah, I'm excited just to see, I'm excited just to see see what it's like. You know, see if it's gonna be. I mean, I know people are like, you know, people want the upset because they want people want Steve. All the people are just in Steve Rolls. You know, they want Steve Rolls to actually be Kennedy Golovkin. You know, but I mean, Steve Rolls is undefeated, so mm -hmm. at least you know at least. Golovkin got someone who's undefeated where 
you know, he's never lost before. You know, he, you know, he might have an extra chamber when it comes to, you know, continuing. You know, he might not give up as easy as a guy who faced defeat before. But we know once, you know, some dudes once they got knocked out or once they quit once, you know, it's a little easier to go through that door again. Right. So I feel like you know he could have got somebody a lot worse. We've seen worse. You know, he didn't masquerade. You know, try to bring up a a, a smaller fighter and you know do do some type of an event like that. You know, he's just taking the unknown guy who seems to be solid and you know solid record undefeated and gonna try some new shit out that he learned from Jonathan Banks. You know, he getting that little. Little crunk pedigree, little, little, you know, little Klitschko with with right. it, a little learning, you know, relearning certain things and showing showing new things. Cause I think Belovkin, you know, he probably stagnated with Abel Sanchez for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he did. And, yeah, and that was, that was all book. Cause I mean, remember it was Steve Rawls. That was, Steve Rawls wasn't the original opponent. The original opponent before was like Brandon Adams, and niggas had something to say about Brandon Adams. Brandon Adams at least was, I mean, obviously if you watch The Contender, I mean, you, you it wasn't a bad fight, but for yeah, he's more, he's more proven and he's more of a name, but, right, you know, that, that shit fell through. It's like, you know, niggas are never going to be truly happy like that. I'm just saying, keep the same, I got the same energy I had for the Rocky Fielder fight for Canelo. Like, yeah. that was a trash fight. This fight, you know, in the essence, it's still a career mode trash fight, but I, I'm a boxing fan. I'm going to watch it. But it has more, you know, it has a little more wrinkles to it because, can, you know, Golovkin got a new trainer. You know, he's looking he's looking different in training. You know, Steve Rose is undefeated. It's not like Fielding was just a big guy brought in there, you know, that we knew ain't have a chance. Right, you know, Rose might, you know, show us something that we haven't seen before. Who who knows, you know. Especially all the upsets that been happening in boxing. Right. <laughs> I can only imagine if, if Triple G falls to this dude. Oh, I, he, yeah, that'd be crazy. Yeah, it would be absolutely crazy. Boxing would have just gone topsy-turvy crazy in 2019. I mean, that, 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 would be, that would be the biggest upset of the year for boxing. I mean, it would easily supplant Ruiz and Joshua. But I'm not going to put that type of energy in the air, bro. Oh, no, no, I'm just saying. But, it, yeah, it would be crazy. But I, I think Golovkin's just a, a higher technician. You're on another level. You know, you're more old school than a Joshua. Like, like Golovkin, he, he still never really got his moment, if you think about it. Hmm. He's gotten the bag along with some nice moments, but he hasn't had that one. You know, they robbed him from them Canelo wins, so he still ain't had that pinnacle victory yet. Like, right. You, you know, having a draw with Canelo, I guess, is the pinnacle for him right now. After that, you get the Jacobs win and the <clears throat> Brook fight and, you know, Gil and the other uh, contenders, he's demolished and shit, but. You know, I, I don't think Golovkin is gonna fucking just fall apart on old Steve fucking Rose, man. Like, no, <laughs> that's a different breed, man. Like, you know, like guys like him and like even her, you know, you're gonna have to really go in there with a game plan and beat their ass and, and, and take that people's champion belt from them. Like, you know, I don't think it's gonna be a Joshua situation where a nigga just come in there at seventy percent. Mm-hmm. And a guy just kind of does, does his normal thing and beat his ass. <laughs> you had to dig deep. You had to have your best performance, right? Because right now, I've seen a lot of guys had their best performance on Golovkin, and they haven't beat him yet. I still haven't seen him lose, right? And then when he lose, I'll be the first one to say, "Yeah, he lost." But yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have no problem. It hasn't happened yet. I've seen bad judging is all I'm fucking seeing. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it, like I said, it'll be interesting to see what Triple G has. Because, like I said, this will be this fight will be the buffer to see. Because, obviously, now, probably even more than ever now, the zone's going to be like, okay, we need to schedule this Triple G Canelo 3 fight. 
I mean, this is this is just basically it's on the horizon. I Man, I know we, yeah. we I know we. They really, it. yeah. <laughs> you, you right. <laughs> they really go want to see. They hope this fight is a success, so they can start the next big, you know, promotion with Triple G Canelo. Cause yeah, I, I, the Joshua fight, I think got niggas scared, man. Right. You know, so you know, it's just like they either gotta have some fun there. Now, obviously, because I mean, at least if one of them takes the L, they're both underneath the banner. So it's just like to either to get you know to get some get some home fights in it, either or Canelo versus. I mean, probably because I, I don't think they're gonna try to make a Canelo versus Callum Smith fight. I just don't see that fight happening. At least not right away because Callum Smith is dangerous right now, very dangerous and very big. Yeah, way yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's a that's a harder fight than the, the triple G rematch for me. Like And even uh, even probably less likely is Canelo versus Andre. I don't see that fight happening at all, period. Yeah, of course obviously it depends how Andre looks as Andre has a fight. And see, I hate how we I, I, I hate that boxing is coming to the point where we're just saying we're naming all these good fights that could realistically happen and we're saying that they're not gonna happen. It, 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 boxing sunk that fucking low, where we're like, well, damn, well, yeah, how about this nigga? Like, nah, he ain't gonna make that fight. Yeah. This guy would be a good fight, nah, not him. I, th- I think it's the jaded. I think it's the, either a the us knowing and two us being jaded, and you know, and most of the time they're actually right. Like, I have yet to see a fight like really. Su- I mean, I can't remember the last time a fight that I said that wasn't gonna that it was never gonna happen that happened. It's been a while. And Andre, I mean, that Andre Canelo fight should have been scheduled at some point. Especially that when- honestly needs to be the next fight. I'd rather see, I'd rather see Lumpkin fight like a, uh, like a, a, a Lemieux or, or, not a Lemieux, I'm sorry, like a, Mer- like a, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What's that dude that beat, uh, <clears throat> Ryota? Mm. Um, ah, damn, I can't remember his name. Um, but that type of level, like you know, see him get the, uh, <clears throat> see him get the, uh, what's him call it? See, see how he builds a relationship with Jonathan Banks, mm-hmm. get them skills back up, and then and, and get get some new fights, man. Because if, if we're just gonna, if the judges are always gonna give the Canelo fight to Canelo with Golovkin, then. I don't even care about seeing it like that anymore. Like, how many fucking times we gonna see Canelo outbox this nigga to, 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 to not get the win? So, maybe I would prefer Andre and you know, a Golovkin or Andre Canelo or, or Callum Smith Canelo. I don't know, man. Like, just something different. Or Callum Smith Triple G. Oh, that might happen. That'll be even. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, I, I understand that, you know. But, yeah. but even Jacob Callum Smith, like, that's another one. Like, like, g- give us some new fucking matchups, man. Like, like if y'all going to I'm tired of seeing the same shit with the same results, even though the results are wrong. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good on that. Like, you see how the heavyweights got shaken up? The middleweights is getting stagnant this year, too, especially after last year was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that's what... Yeah. Somebody need to lose. <laughs> you know, if someone needs to lose in order to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, like I said middleweight is what it is right now. I know it's like Triple G, depending on how it looks, depending on if Triple G loses, then any of these fights are out, all out the window, and Canelo will have to. And I know the zone will probably blow its, you know, will blow its fuse, you know, because it's just like... All their brains uh, out. <laughs> yeah. Because they're paying, they're paying Triple G a lot of money. And on top of that, dude, Triple G, I mean, this card that Triple G is, is through his own promotion. This is this is his doing. So he has a whole bunch of prospects on this card, you know, like a Charles Conwell. And even someone else that I'm actually pretty high on, uh, Israel Madrimov, who is only, this is this will be his third fight into his career. However, Madrimov has already got these comparisons to actually being a young Triple G. Um, myself, I've had the pleasure of actually watching Dude in his last fight live. Um, damn near kill somebody in front of me. You know, you know. I mean, it was. It, it, it's still. It's still a KO of the year candidate. It might actually be my KO of the year candidate. 
because it, it was so brutal because you know dude didn't wake up from the time he got put to sleep until they they was they carried his ass out there on the stretcher so after seeing that i'm just like i'm very i'm definitely interested in seeing how manager how manager of will you know perform because i know he's actually been calling out Heidi Mangia for a title shot which is absolute bananas to me um so so yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like I said, it's, it's a it's a prospect card. The co main thing is like a prospect card too, a prospect fight too, and then Kevin J. So at best, it's you know, it's something to watch. You know, we watch. You know, that's how it is. If you're a boxer fan, you know, you're especially if you're a hardcore fan. You'll you'll watch it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, keeping it real. It's not a big fight. You know, it's, it's a triple G get a win. Get get back into the swing of things, fight to mm-hmm. see what happens next. <laughs> exactly. So and then and then really, I'll probably touch upon this card really quick. Now this is also a card from yesterday too. Um, headlining. I mean, there were a couple upsets. I mean, there was Godzilla that got upset by Rodney Hernandez on there in the opening belt. You know, and I, and I and I I'm gonna mention this too because you know Godzilla was, you know, nickname and he's Nigerian, and he got knocked out in the first round by a Mexican fighter, Rodney Hernandez. So it was just that type of night for Nigerian fighters, bro. You know, it was just <laughs> just that type of it was just that type of time. You know, it's very rare that you see two Nigerian fighters get KO'd by the Mexican fighters in one day in separate platforms. Today, yesterday was one of those days, bro. All I can just do is uh, saw that and shake my head. Shake my head. Yeah. yeah it's like the World Cup or some shit. Yeah. The World Cup of boxing. <laughs> oh, man. And then after that, we had Willie Monroe Jr. versus Hugo Santino Jr. And that fight was... It, it, it went the way... If, you're, if you've seen one Willie Monroe fight, you've seen them all. And that's how it went against Santino. He basically boxed the ears off Hugo Santino on his way to a decision. There was there wasn't really any attempt to put him away or anything like that. You know the usual. I mean, really, I mean, it wasn't really an enjoyable fight to watch, but it is what it is. And then we had the main event. We had Devin Alexander versus Ivan Redcash. I mean, there was already things going on there where Devin blew weight by four and a half pounds, which is unlike him. You know, Devin's a, a pretty professional guy. To, so to blow weight like that was just, you know, shaking head. The fight itself was just sad to watch. Uh, I just, because we, we alluded to in the recap that this was just the fight. You had to rebuild Devin Alexander after the draw and then the job loss he took. And this time he, he gets KO'd for the first time in his career. He gets dropped and stopped. The first time against Ivan Redcash. And it was sad too. Because it was brutal. Yeah, it was, That's what it was. Yeah. It was, Damn. I didn't even see it coming, but yeah, it was sad too. Yeah, and like Lex, I I have a soft spot for Devin Alexander. I, I, I fought him when he when he was um when he when he came up, you know, I you know, I peg I mean Floyd, this was a guy that Floyd pegged as someone special too. This is one of Floyd's early predictions on fighters. You know, Devin was, you know, I was a fan of Devin's, you know, I enjoyed his, you know, but, you know, I enjoyed watching him come up the ranks and everything like that. But somewhere along the line, you know, Devin lost his way. Or he, something, something, like, these weird losses popped up. You know, I was, I was not happy with Bradley. He was with Bradley. I didn't think that he'd beat Kotelnik or Matisse. Was it Kotelnik? No, no, that was Khan. The Kotelnik no, fight. No, no, was... Yeah, yeah. He, he was looking bad in the Kotelnik fight. I, yeah, I, damn, you you remember that? I didn't see that shit in years. But... And, and just, uh, he, he was getting outboxed, and he just kept fighting harder. He he, he couldn't adjust in that shit. Yeah, and then same thing with Matisse. Matisse was actually hurting. Him. And, you know, he chucked, yeah. and then I didn't think he went in that fight. And then of course, my down the fight, you know, he flawless. And then it was just, and then of course it was just a quarter, and then it gets out boxed by Khan. And then I don't even, I don't even mention the, the the loss to Aaron Martinez, and that was just sad. And then after that, you, you have the Berto. I mean, 
Alex, Devin has going to have a very up and down, and even through all that, he still won belts in two, in two divisions. So just to see Red Cash just put hands on him like he did and finish him off like he did, it was just sad to watch. Um, it was just like he wasn't in shape or nothing like that. So it's just like, you know, what do you do with a Devin Alexander who's about 32, 33 years old now, who's been a pro for a minute? It's just like, you can't even, like, he, if, you, if you can't beat the Ivan Red Cashes in the world, you have a basically, you know, the only the only position you go through is down. Either you got a rematch to do, or you go down, or you, or you start going down as a jobber to the stars or a journeyman type of role. I don't even think he could be jobber to the stars at this point, man. No. Like, he, he, he would literally have to rematch Red Cash and knock him the fuck out. Right, exactly. And he would have to do that shit, like, this year, like, 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 literally within a year time, like, maybe even sooner because I'm sure Red Cash don't want to sit on that victory. He gonna want to get another bag. He gonna want to get another bigger fight. Right. So you know, it, it just sad, man. It just goes back to like what I said, man. You know, PBC fucked them with them losses last year. That draw and them and that loss. Yeah. You know. And that, so, hey, we. we we talk about all the time how some of these conclusions just fuck people's careers up for good. And I think this is one of them, man. This might be up there with fucking, um, what's, uh, Beldrick Taylor, how if he would have just got that win over Chavez, his career probably would have never turned out the way it turned out. Well, I, was, I mean, I mean, he would have gotten the win, but the damage would have still been done. I mean, I know it's a reach, nigga, but. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, man, it's just like, I mean, it's sad, though. I mean, just seeing yeah. that. But I don't think he's going to fight. What was that? I'm All sorry. That shit, man, like. Sir, I'm just saying, like, I don't think. I don't think he would have went. I don't think we would have had rematches. I don't think he would have kept fighting on like that. Like. Mm -hmm. Like he, it's like when you take niggas' big moments away, if they ain't a built a certain way, like that shit could crush you, right? And, and and you know we've seen that happen in boxing. You know what I'm saying is like I think yeah the permanent damage was done, the physicality of that fight, but for him, for Taylor to have such a performance like that and he still lose on some final second type shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you come back from that? Well, technically, he, I mean, yeah, I mean, technically, he he was able to come back from that a little bit. He still, I mean, he still won a belt after that. I mean, he won from a good fighter, but I think the damage was it was compounded because oh. because he, he took a lot of damage, and I think, yeah, yeah. By by the time he went up, he fought Terry Norris. He was he was on the slide, you know. He was on he was on a, a noticeable slide. Um, Said. So, and so it's sad, man. Just like with Alexander, like mm -hmm. if he gets those wins last year, there's no way a red cash fight happens. No, not at all. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you can tell Devin Alexander he lost a step. You know, Ortiz was kind of giving it to him in the later rounds, like you know. But he he deserved that win. The Birdo fight wasn't even close. So he should have got that. He deserved the fucking Spence payday or a fucking damn Garcia fight and all that mm -hmm. shit. Or a Porter rematch and, and look what happens. It's just, it's just, it's sad, but you know, it just shows you, you know, at the end of the day, man, niggas got to start getting these knockouts. Right, exactly. exactly. That's the only way you can remedy this shit, man. You got to box in a style that break niggas down. <clears throat> And get that knockout, man, because these judges will fuck you over and over, man. And you put it in their hands, you see your career could just be here, gone the next day, man. I'm telling you. Right. Sad. Very sad. So, Let me think about Persona again, bro. <laughs> that's, a, that's another one where we don't know how her spirit is going to act after that. Like, Right. You know, who knows if she got another performance like that, you know, because sometimes, you know, mentally, if you could 
push your body another limit and, and that's that i guess that's the point i was trying to make with meldrick taylor like it, it mentally he didn't get that he didn't get that check on that like 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 the answers on his test and get that check on it you know what i mean like and so it's like there's it's like that mental void man I, and that's big in boxing bro like and you already know that shit like and niggas don't get that mental satis- satisfaction that I did everything and I got over the hump, man. And niggas out here denying that shit. So, you know, that's why we love knockout punches, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. So, yeah, I mean, that was boxing uh, for this weekend and boxing in a nutshell. So, we've come to the end of our show. Uh, LB, do you have any final thoughts? Or did you already give now? Uh, that was it. Like, I mean, I feel like this is the best weekend of boxing we had. <clears throat> Maybe since the uh, the Estrada uh, Soren Visa rematch. That that weekend was a good good boxing weekend. Yeah. Probably those probably have been the two best nights of boxing this year. Yeah. That's actually, yep, that's... Oh, wait, the, the J-Rock, yeah, the J-Rock. And the, was that the same night, or what was that? Uh, it was close. Yeah, it was close, yeah. yeah they, they booked all the good nights together now. I see that shit, bro, but, um... Yeah, I felt like it was a bitter, 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 bittersweet end, you know. It was good, a little bittersweet, but a little hope for the future. It's bittersweet because Alexander, you know, we, we seen him probably you know take his last you know meaningful fight you know we seen a, a colossal power punching epic matchup at heavyweight be destroyed along the lines of Superman and Kovalev mm-hmm. it'll, it'll never happen or if it happens it'll never be the same you know so it's just, it just, it, you know, you got a lot of that going on. You know, there's no, there's no victory in, in seeing a big fight get ruined, even if the fight is good. And you know, I felt the same way with, with, with uh, Chocolatito and Soren Visa, you know, that first fight. Yeah, exactly. We give, get Ch- Chocolatito, Chocolatito wins that fucking first fight. <clears throat> I think, he, I think mentally his mind stays up there. And they angle for that uh, fight with uh, Monster, and I think Monster gets gets that win, and his career goes another direction. Yeah, but everything happens for a reason, so that it is what it. <laughs> that, that is real talk, and then also something as you were talking about, just uh, my final thoughts and something that just came to my own mind. Um, this is also related to what happened with um, Joshua and Ruiz. Uh, unfortunately, now boxing has, you know, boxing media and sports media as a whole that deal that, that, that cover sports uh, is very it's it's very hard to find. Uh, it's very hard to find people who know how to talk about it correctly in that aspect. I mean, you have your boxing person. Uh, yes, you know, because like I said, I mean. The, the best boxing personalities could a you know obviously can actually first of all they know, they know what's going on in boxing and two they can they can convey it in a matter to the casuals out there you know to that you know so that it makes sense what's going on and I just ha- and then shortly after the fight um, I was on Twitter and then I I was always I I come across you know, I come across some tweets from Stephen A. Smith. Now, Stephen A. Smith, unfortunately, has some of the absolute worst hot takes in boxing I've ever seen. I mean, from a mainstream sports personality. I mean, dude I mean, dude likes boxing. That's, uh, uh, that's as much as I give, but he is not qualified to talk about it. And he's been on, he's been on top-ranked broadcast. The last broadcast he was on, which was during the... Uh, Lomachenko Pedraza card, I believe. I mean, dude was falling asleep and had to be nudged awake by Andre Ward. You know, something that I, I found kind of appalling. Especially since the fight card was actually pretty damn good. So I don't know what the fuck his problem was. But anyways, 
you know, he, you know, some of the tweets that he's put, you know, he put out, he's like, oh my god, oh my god, I cannot believe this S word. Shit. Anthony Joshua, holder of three belts, gets TKO'd by Butterbean. I mean, some dude named Andy Ruiz Jr. What a damn disgrace. Joshua looked completely gassed, more fatigued than hurt. Now, how in the hell do you let that happen? How? What kind of shit is that to talk? What kind of shit is that to say? <laughs> what? And then after that, he's like, no, I'm sick over this but for myself, for five minutes, especially for Deontay Wilder, who should have been the one administering this TKO. I'm so freaking disgusted right now. And then this is, I think people, I mean, people were, I mean, people were really letting him have it. And then he's like, I watched the fight three times. Look, Ruiz is good, solid boxer, fast hands. But everyone's missing the point. The fight we were all winning for while this Jeff is officially ruined. No one with sense believes that's why has a chance versus him now, even if he goes back and beats Ruiz. And then the last one. He's got a glass jaw, that is the point. Mega fight equals ruin, that is my damn point. People wake up. What kind of tweets are these, bro? Like, seriously. They're hard tweets, but it's the frustration of a casual fan not getting a fucking super fight that we all wanted to see. It just, I see where he's coming from. But, but it also, I mean, like, but butter he was, bean was the worst one, though. Yeah, no, yeah. He, the, the ignorance, like, like, you know, Stephen A. Smith has a lot of ignorance in his tweets. Like, he's very, you know, he, he, it's clear that he's, he, it's on a casual level. But so yeah. probably some dude named Andy Ruiz Jr., like, bruh, like, if you don't, like, if you're gonna be dick riding heavyweights, the top heavyweights, at least know who the fuck they're facing. You know, at least show. Yeah, like, that was gonna call for, like, you know, even the butter bean, like just he ain't had to say butter bean, right? Yeah, even no. if, if he could have said, he could have said, oh, this guy named Andy Ruiz Jr. beat the champ. I mean, he looks like butter bean, but he could fight. Like, there's better ways. If he was trying to make a joke, I felt there was better, more tactful ways to go about it. No, but he just doubled down on his stupidity, and that's in. That is what I felt like. But people, you know, peanut head, and he said that's stupid shit. So, yeah. but but as far as the other tweets with Wilder and Joshua, like that's how a lot of people looking at the fight. It was these niggas is fighting twice a year, so it takes fucking three, four years to fucking make a fucking super fight, and look what happened. I mean, boxing got what it deserved. Everybody got what they deserved. Wilder, Joshua, all these motherfuckers got what they deserved. The fans did too. And we got a good fight, you know. It made me think of Salido or, or Juan Manuel Lopez. Yeah, you know. We ended up still getting a good fight. It's just, we didn't get the one we wanted, but we got a good fight. Right. But but Stephen A, yeah, I, I hate the I hate the fact that the, it's always the motherfuckers with the, I don't know in, in, in boxing you see this the most. It's the niggas with the least clout and knowledge and, and respect for the sport get the biggest platforms. Like, I mean, there's other people that we can kind of see if we could grab and elevate besides fucking, you know, uh, Stephen A. Smith. Like, I know we got Max Kellerman and Teddy Atlas, but they, they can't save the world by themselves, man. Like, you no, know, it's time for them to, you know, handpick some other people. Like, like, Get some niggas from the fucking um, from the minors and bring them up to the majors, man. Like, get some big, you know, <laughs> elevate some people, bro. Cause the Stephen A. Smith shit, like, yeah, it, it, it's getting old. Like, I, I I I appreciate his enthusiasm, cause I like anybody to be happy and excited about boxing, but you gotta put a little respect on that shit, bro. You gotta put more respect on that, man. Like. You know, I remember when he was talking about the uh, the guys Jeff Horn fight. I'm sorry, the guys Jeff Horn had fought going into the Pacquiao fight. And he was kind of making some some shitty comments then, and I'm like, damn, bro. Like, even though he was right at the end about the robbery and all that, but you know, just you know, research this shit, man. You know, get get a respect for the sport, and, and, and this is one of my major reasons why. I be I can't stand sometimes when, when motherfuckers that want to speak on boxing don't fucking go to a gym and see fighters train and actually put some boxing workouts in because they don't have a fucking respect for it, man. Because they just see other people getting punched in the face. They don't know how that feels because they safely on the outside. 
So they just say stupid shit. You know, boxing the one sport where everybody think they uh, they an expert without even doing it. Mm-hmm. And, and you see that all the time when Stephen A. Smith opened his mouth. Yeah, exactly. He, he think he an expert, motherfucker. You ain't boxing, then you know you you ain't never even get a respect for the sport to really fucking even talk the way you talk. Like people, you, people get mad. At, people used to get mad at Larry Merchant, but goddamn, Larry Merchant did way more for the sport than Stephen A. And no. he give way more props and respect. Like, come on, it's yeah. it's like night and day. Like, come on. Mm-mm. <clears throat> yeah, no. I mean, Larry Merchant. I mean, when people used to go off on like his views, I'm like, this motherfucking watch. I mean, he's 88 years old. Like, he's watched boxing since like the 50s, 40s, and 50s. They're different. Like, they're, they're, that's a different generation of boxing. It's very different. From what today is, and and you can see, and and there's things about it that you just, I mean, obviously he want to fuck with, you know, but like I said, yeah. but it's that tough love, like you know, once a boxing fan, always a boxing fan. It just sometimes in certain generations, certain eras don't produce enough excitement to 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 really make you cross over to being a hardcore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and niggas get jaded like us. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They pick apart every fucking thing. <laughs> it sapped the joy out of all this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Alleg- allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, like, where actually we have a lot of joy in boxing. Like we talk about it. Like if we didn't talk about if we if we if we didn't find any joy in boxing, we wouldn't be here right now in this podcast talking about it or doing what we do outside of the podcast. Because we love we, we love boxing. We want to see boxing represented on a level that will help it grow among people and to have, and to have it regain its stature. That's what, you know, that's why if we didn't talk about boxing, the ring and radio wouldn't exist. Flat out, like, let's yeah. up and down, you know, yeah, so. Everything comes from boxing, really. Yeah. All, all this shit, the, everything comes from boxing, then the, the articles, the forgotten fades, which we got a new one of, y'all check that out. Right. You know, the bars in boxing, the artwork, all that shit come from boxing. Yeah, the video. You know I mean, we gotta put it somewhere. We, <laughs> the videos, all that, the training, all that shit come from boxing. So yeah, we, there ain't no radio without the ring gang. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we, we do, I mean, let's say, we find lots of joy in boxing, you know? And it's not limited. We have, you know, we're not limited people. And uh, we like, you know, we, we have a lot of boxing related interests in boxing. Not just with now, you know, but the past and sometimes the future, you know. <laughs> so it's just like we and and basically, but that we're <laughs> but invested in this shit. It's like you're seeing something grow, you're seeing something grow with you. Like the see you growing up and you see a you know your favorite fighter grow up with you and he getting title fights. And you see him from prospect level all the way to contender to all the way to journeyman. You know, back to retiring, you know, because they passed it and they are they went on too long. It's like you see all that shit, man. And you, you and sometimes you can see it in the span of two or three years. Mm-hmm. Whereas compared to seeing a guy like Dwayne Wade career, you know, go from fucking 2003 to now. Shit, I, I remember Jermaine Taylor career was popping around that same time. And, all right. That shit's been over for a minute, right? Mm-hmm. And we've seen people time, you 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 know, all the way till now. <laughs> <laughs> so it just it just shows you, man. That that's how that shit is, man. But, but yeah, yeah. Once again, yeah, yeah. Stephen A. Smith, yeah, y'all y'all gotta find yourself a new nigga. Man. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, so we need. I mean, like, like basically, we would love to say something. I mean, other than Max Kellerman or Teddy. You know, we'd love to find someone else there that, I mean, because those two at least, I mean, obviously, I mean, they, they have enough clout where we, you know, we respect their opinion. We just want someone, if you want to go put, you know, if you want to put a face, you know, on mainstream attention and boxing and coverage, you know, try to find someone who is willing to willing to learn. That's the important lesson, learn. You know, most people, most people yeah, just... Like, you think you you chilling with Teddy Atlas and, and, and Max Kellerman and all these people, you you would soak up some fucking knowledge by now, like... You know, damn, t- it makes, makes me wonder, man, like... 
you know, it's, I mean, it's just like, I mean, I say, Teddy Atlas is more than just, you know, I mean, Teddy Atlas, obviously, you know, he's a personality, but Teddy also drops knowledge every now and drops knowledge in between his friends. Like, he keep it real, man. And Max, you know, Max is a, you know, he's, he's you know, he's a walking, he's like, you know, knowledge in boxing, you know, it's just like, we want more people of that to be covering, you know, to be delivering hot takes and stuff like that, you know. Not a cat who just, you know, whose biggest thing is like, hey, I have Floyd Mayweather's number, or I know this fighter, you yeah, know. Like, groupie shit, like. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's cool sad. basketball and shit, but boxing, nah. I mean, it's sad, dude, because I mean, because uh, to compare, I have Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez, if you ever read her tweets, knows what's going on. You know, she be posting. Yeah, I, I love, yeah, like, like we, need, like someone like her should be in the forefront making these hot takes instead of someone uh, uh, who's who's actually working for a sports entity like Stephen A. Smith. It sounded like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, exactly. So yeah, sorry to go off on a little rant, you know, about that. But when I just saw it, it triggered that memory, I had to, I just had to talk about that real quick. But yeah, so yeah, just, hey, so those, let me like, show you how, how crazy a night of boxing it was because it triggered a lot of people, a lot of emotions. Right. It, it felt like the Thanos snap. <laughs> yeah, it definitely it's, it definitely triggered a lot of my emotions. That's for damn sure, man. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, so yeah, uh, so yeah, we're about to get up out of here. So uh, till next week or so. For myself, Pat Scorpion, the New England representer. For my man, Shutterworth the God, LB the GOAT artist. Ring gang in the house, always and forever, man. So, uh, yep, until next time. Peace. <laughs>